everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet this Christmas star bauble, which is the one that you see here. It is a very simple design that uses a little bit of color work. Uh, and if you're looking for an introduction to uh, doing a little bit of color work, you might want to check out one of my other Christmas baubles, the Christmas tree bauble, uh, which is also on um, on my YouTube channel here, and uh, you will find it in the Christmas ornament playlist. And I'll also link it here in this video for you. So this is the bobble that we're going to work today. This is the Christmas star bobble. It's a very simple design. The free written crochet pattern can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and I'll provide the direct link for you in the notes of this video. For this pattern, you are going to need a uh, plastic Christmas bobble uh, or like the one I have here or you can use another one, an old one, and upcycle it if you'd like. We're just going to be crocheting around the bobble. If you choose, you could also use a little bit of fiber fill and in the written pattern, and I'll uh, briefly describe it here in, in this video, uh, you may uh, completely enclose the top and stuff it if you choose instead of using one of these plastic bobbles. You're also going to need a four millimeter crochet hook, a stitch marker, a yarn needle and a pair of scissors for finishing off, and then a little bit, about 50 yards of each color of worsted weight yarn. I'm using this Heartland yarn by Lion Brand. Uh, you will need two colors at least. I'm going to be using this uh, blue uh, called Olympic for my color A, and I'm going to use the Great Sand Dunes for my color B, which is this uh, more golden colored one. That's it. Again, the crochet pattern can be found for free on my blog, richtexturescrochet.com. And uh, thank you so much for joining me here today. Please, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's updated weekly with free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials. So let's uh, get started and learn how to crochet this Christmas star bobble. Now, one final note about this pattern before we begin. The color work for the bobble is worked in uh, from a chart with, like this one that you see here. So I encourage you to head over to my blog. You can print the chart from there or you can purchase the PDF copy and print the chart that's there in it. But uh, this is the chart that we will be working with from this pattern and it's just a simple chart. Each little square represents one single crochet and uh, you can see there's 48 columns because there are 48 stitches in a round and there are 10 rounds uh, where we will, we will be working our star pattern. So uh, head on over there and grab this chart before you begin. So now to begin, you're going to start by taking your color A, and again, I'm using this Olympic color of the Heartland yarn, a worsted weight yarn. You're going to start by making a, either a magic ring or chain four and join in the first chain to make your ring. I'm going to start by making just a simple magic ring here. But regardless of how you make your ring, once you've made it, you're going to chain one and work one single or six single crochet stitches into the center of that ring. Just like so. In this pattern, we are not going to be joining or turning at the end of the, each round. You're going to be working in continuous rounds, and you're also going to be working in the back loop only of your stitches. So when you take a look at the top of your stitches, I'm just going to remove my hook. When you take a look at the top of your stitches, you will see the V. The back loop only is the stitch that is furthest away from you. Okay, so you're going to be always working under that back loop only, that loop that is farthest away from you. So once you have your six single crochets worked into the center of your ring, 
without joining, you're simply going to start in the next stitch. You're going to work in the back loop only, single crochet, uh, two stitches in each stitch all the way around. After your first one or first two, you're going to go back and you're with your stitch marker, you're going to mark that first stitch and you're going to move that stitch marker up as your work progresses. That way you will always know where you have started. I'm going to move that aside. So work two single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. At the end of this round, you are going to have a total of 12 stitches. For round three, I'm going to briefly remove my stitch marker. You're going to work two single crochet stitches, again, always in the back loop only, two in that first stitch. Replace my stitch marker. And then one in the next. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Two single crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in the next. Repeat that all the way around and at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 18 stitches. Just like so. You'll find that these baubles are fairly quick to work up. Um, I Mine takes about an hour for these easier ones. I have a few more coming uh, soon that I have a little bit more of an intricate design on them. Uh, so you can stay tuned for those. But these ones take me about uh, one to two hours. We're now on to round four. For round four, you're going to, in the back loop only, single crochet, two, work two single crochets in that first stitch followed by one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. Repeat two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next two. At the end of round four, you're going to have a total of 24 stitches. For round five, you are going to work two single crochet stitches in that first stitch. Followed by one single crochet in each of the next three. Repeat two single crochets in the next stitch and one single crochet in each of the next three. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 30 stitches, and you should see now that your beginning work is getting larger and larger as it progresses. For round six, you're going to work two single crochet stitches into the next stitch. followed by one single crochet in each of the next four. Repeat that, two single crochets in the next stitch, and then one single crochet in each of the next four. You're going to continue that all the way around, and at the end of this round, you will have a total of 36 stitches. For round seven, you're going to work two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next five stitches. Repeat that, two single crochets in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next five.
You're going to repeat that all the way around at the end of this round, round seven. You're going to have a total of 42 stitches. For round eight, this is the final of our increase rounds. You're going to single crochet, uh, two, work two single crochets in that first stitch. And then you're going to single crochet in each of the next six stitches. Repeat that, work two single crochet stitches in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet in each of the next six stitches. When you come to the end of this round, you are going to have a total of 48 stitches. So once you have uh, completed round eight, you are now at the point where you are going to start to work some of this coloring into your bobble. So the coloring is from rounds nine to 19. It's uh, 10 rounds and you're going to want to follow your chart. Now the way that you follow your chart for the color work is uh, that each square equals one single crochet stitch and I've numbered them down here for you so there's a total of 48 uh, stitches in your chart because we are always working in the same direction you are always going to read your chart in the same direction so I am right-handed I'm going to be reading my chart from right starting at this little one across to the left I'm going to uh, at the end of each round, come back to that first column and then read across uh, from right to left. At the end of round two, come back to that first column again and start once again. So I'm always going to be reading my chart in the same direction. If I take a look at my chart here, it says I'm going to uh, work one single crochet in my color A, so all my color A is in white. I'm going to work one single crochet in color A for the first 24 stitches, and then I'm going to switch to my color B for one stitch, and then switch back to my color A and work the final stitches in the round in my color A. If I take a look at round two, it's pretty much the same. Work in color A for first 24, do one in color B and then complete it in color A. When I come to my round three, uh, it gets a little bit more tricky because I'm doing more uh, and shorter color changes. So um, I'll show you that a little bit more in depth when I come to that point on my chart. So right now we're going to work round one together. So we're going to start over here on this column one and uh, the rounds are all marked over here on the left. So this is our first uh, round, which is actually round nine of our pattern. We want to start in our color A. So I'm going to keep my stitch marker moving and keep it uh, moving it up as I am working. My chart tells me I'm going to work that first 24 stitches in my color A. So I'm working one single crochet stitch in each. my final stitch, that 24th stitch that I'm working in my color A. 
but because I am going to be switching to my color B, I'm going to work it a little bit differently. So this is my 24th stitch in color A. I'm going to insert my hook and I'm going to yarn over and drop a loop as I would normally for my single crochet. But instead of continuing with my color A, because my next stitch is in color B, I'm going to drop my color A, I'm going to pick up my color B and place it on my hook, and I'm going to draw it through to complete the stitch. Now I'm ready to work my next color in my color B. I'm going to pull those a little bit tighter. Now what I'm going to do, because I'm going to be wanting to switch back and forth, I am going to carry my color A. I'm not going to fasten it off. I'm going to carry that color A under my work. I'm going to work right over top of it. So for my color B, I'm only working one stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch. I'm working over top of my tails. I'm going to yarn over and drop a loop. Now because I'm only working the one stitch in that color, I'm immediately going to want to change back to my color A. So I'm going to drop my color B, I'm going to pick up my color A, place it on my hook, and complete the stitch. I've now worked one stitch in the color B. Now I am going to continue working my ornament and the rest of my chart is in color A so I'm just going to continue working around. Now there's a couple things that you can do at this point. Because the inside of your work is not going to be seen, I like to just let that color drop and leave it and when I come back I'll simply pick it up again. If you like the back of your work to be neat and tidy, you're going to carry this yarn uh, all the way around and continue to work over top of it just as we did for that other colored stitch. Okay, but uh, for me, I'm just going to let it drop and then I'm going to pick it up when I come back. Now I am going to work over top of my tail a little bit so that I don't have to worry about that color coming undone or uh, having to weave it in later or anything like that. So I'm just completing my chart now. One single crochet in each stitch all the way around in my color A. So now then moving on to round 10, if I take a look at my chart it's exactly the same as round 9. So I'm going to do uh, what I just did all over again. The first 24 stitches are in my color A. Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-three. Now my twenty-fourth stitch is in color A, but I'm going to want to switch to my color B, so insert your hook, yarn over and drop a loop. Simply drop your color A, and then reach in behind there and pick up your color B. Place it on your hook, and draw it through your two loops. And tighten that the, uh, the yarn a little bit there. You're going to start your next stitch in your color A, working over top of that one, that color, uh, sorry, in your color B, working over top of the color A. Again, you want to switch right back to your color A, so you're going to tro drop your color B, pick up the A, and place it on your hook, and draw through your two loops. So you now have uh, another stitch worked in your color A. For the rest of the chart, you're going to continue 
uh, sorry, in your color B, I'm getting my letters all mixed up, you're going to continue the rest of your chart in your color A. Now on to round 11. Now a round 11 has a little bit more color work uh, here in it. So what I'm going to do according to my chart is I'm going to work one single crochet stitch in the first 21 stitches in my color A. and 20 and then the 21st stitch is my final stitch of my color A so I want to switch to my color B now here uh, it is a little bit further back but I'm just going to pick up my color B I'm going to very gently bring it across. Here I don't want to pull it too tight because I don't want it to cause my fabric to buckle at all. So I'm just going to pull it across just like so, placed it on my hook, pulled it over so I'm now ready to start uh, the next stitch. Now here you can see you're going to work one in your color B, two stitches in color A, one in color B, two stitches in color A, and then one in color B. So you're going to be going back and forth quite a bit here. So we have one in our color A. Again, always working in the back loop only. I'm going to immediately switch back to my color B. Work two, or sorry, my color A. Work two stitches in my color A. Switch to my color B work one in color B, two in color A, one final one in color B. And then I'm going to continue the rest of the chart. I'm going to drop that color B and I'm going to continue the rest of my chart in color A. So you're going to want to pay pretty close attention uh, to that color chart. On to round 12 we will work one more round uh, together here in this video and then I'll encourage you to run and grab that chart or memorize the one that you see here on that video but you can find it for free on my blog or you can purchase the PDF and uh, after we work this next round together I'll let you go ahead and complete the chart and then we'll pick up together at round 20 so for this next round, uh, round 10, 11, 12, you're going to work in your color A for the first 23, uh, 22 stitches, and then you're going to switch to your color B. So the first 22 uh, stitches are in color A. There's 20, and then 21, and then on the 22nd stitch, 
I want to switch back to my color B, so I'm going to bring it across just loosely. Oh, sorry, it would help if I did that correctly. I'm going to insert my hook first, drop a loop with my color A, then drop it, pick up my color B, and place it on my hook. I'm going to work one stitch in my color B, followed by one stitch in my color A, one stitch in color B, Oh, what am I doing here? There we go. <laughs> one stitch in color A. Followed by one final stitch in my color B. And then continue and finish the round in my color A. So go ahead, grab the chart continue to work the chart as printed and then at the end of your round 19 we will meet back here and we will go over the decrease rounds together. At this time I have now completed my rounds 9 through to 19 which was the uh, which was the chart including the color work so you can see it here. Once you have completed your color work and you've arrived at round 20, you're going to take your plastic bobble and, uh, or the one you're going to upcycle. If you're going to stuff your bobble, I would wait a little bit longer before you stuff it, um, just to kind of close in the gap up at the top here a little bit. So you're going to place your bobble inside just like so, and we're now going to continue to work around it. We're going to start with our decrease rounds and uh, they're similar to the increase rounds, they're just in reverse. So instead of increasing each time, we're going to be decreasing our stitches by six. So we're going to continue working in the back loop only for that round 20. We're going to work a single crochet two together over the first two stitches. To do that, you're going to insert your hook under the first loop, yarn over and drop a loop. Insert your hook under the next stitch, yarn over and drop a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and draw through all three loops. That's your single crochet uh, two together. Replace your stitch marker and then work one single crochet stitch in each of the next six stitches. You're going to repeat single crochet two together and single crochet in each of the next six. Repeat that all the way around and then at the end of round 20 you will have a total of 42 stitches. For round 21, you're going to single crochet two together. And then single crochet in each of the next five stitches. Single crochet two together and then one single crochet in each of the next five. Repeat that all the way around and then at the end of round 21, you will have a total of 36 stitches. For round 22, you're going to single crochet two together followed by one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. Single crochet two together. 
followed by one single crochet in each of the next four. You're going to continue that all the way around and at the end of round 22 you will have a total of 30 stitches. For round 23 you're going to single crochet two together followed by one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Single crochet two together, and one in each of the next three. You're going to continue that all the way around, and at the end of round 23, you will have a total of 24 stitches. For round 24, you're going to single crochet two together in the next two stitches, followed by one single crochet in each of the next two. Single crochet two together, and one single crochet in each of the next two. Then you're going to continue to repeat that all the way around. At the end of this round, you will have a total of 18 stitches. Now at the end of round 24, this is what your work will look like if you're working around the bobble. If you're working around the bobble at the end of that round, you are going to fasten off. So insert your hook into the back loop only of the next stitch, yarn over and just slip stitch there, and then fasten off. When you fasten off, you're going to leave a little bit of a, a longer tail. If you are continuing to uh, work your bobble uh, to fill it with fiber fill, at this point I would say it's a good time to stuff it through this opening here and then you're going to continue your decrease rounds. So round 25 would be a single crochet two together and then single crochet in the next stitch. You'll have 12 stitches and then around 26 with a single crochet two together all the way around so that you have a remaining uh, six stitches. Then at that time you would fasten off your work leaving that long tail. No matter what method you're doing, what I did was I then took my yarn needle and taking that long thread, I wanted to, uh, if you're working around the bobble, you want to bring this in a little bit tighter. If you're closing it completely, you'll want to close it off completely. So what I did was I just simply took my needle and I wove the yarn in and out around those top stitches all the way around. So I created a bit of uh, a drawstring. So just weave it in and out all the way around. When you come back to where you started, you're just going to pull it through and you're going to pull the opening tight. Just like so. Now then for mine, I just simply I uh, fastened it a little bit here, right close to the top, making a little bit of a knot to keep it tight. And then I wove my yarn through. Clip it off. Reapply your little top, hopefully without bending it as I have, and there you have it. That is all there is to making this easy Christmas star bubble. Add a little hanger and you're all set to hang it on your tree. So thank you so much for joining me and uh, please again I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Happy crocheting. Bye.